In Fast Track Schedule 10, there are two scheduling methods that can be utilized in order to control how your activities will behave throughout your projects. Those two methods are known as effort-driven or fixed-duration scheduling. The first method that we'll talk about today is effort-driven scheduling. With effort-driven scheduling, we say that the amount of effort, which is typically calculated in work hours, will always remain constant across the task no matter how many resources are assigned. As we assign additional resources or increase or decrease the amount of effort that a single resource applies to that activity, the actual duration calculated in days will either increase or decrease with that change. A good example of an effort-driven activity would be preparing for a trade show. During that preparation, if it takes us, say, eight hours to set up uh, the trade show, then we could assign one resource at eight hours. When we do that, the duration will take one day because a resource's default work calendar is defined as eight hours per day. However, if we assign two resources to do that same work, it still takes a total of eight hours to complete the work. However, since both resources are working at the same time, it's four hours each over that same period of time, so it actually only takes one half day of duration. So here we can see that with effort-driven scheduling, as we increase or decrease the number of resources assigned, the work will always remain constant. However, the duration will either increase or decrease along with those changes. The other method that we offer in Fast Track Schedule 10 is known as fixed duration scheduling. With fixed duration scheduling, we say, just as the name implies, that the duration always remains the same. With fixed duration scheduling, this means that as we increase the number of resources, the duration will never change. However, the work value will automatically again, increase or decrease based on the change in resources assigned or amount of effort that each resource applies. A good example for a fixed duration task would be the actual trade show itself. If the trade show is three days, it's always going to occur over three days, no matter how many resources are assigned. For example, if we assign one resource that work across those three days of duration, which gives a total of 24 hours of work. This is calculated using the base schedule for that resource, again the default here being eight hours. If we then assign two resources to work during this period of time, the duration remains three days, however the work doubles, going from the original 24 hours for a single resource to a combined 48 hours for both resources that are currently assigned. Now one key thing to take note of within Fast Track Schedule is that effort-driven scheduling is going to be the default scheduling method utilized. This means that anytime we create a new activity, whether we plan to use effort-driven or fixed duration, those tasks automatically appear to be effort-driven scheduling. If we'd like to change the method that we're going to utilize throughout our project, we can do so by going up to our Fast Track Schedule 10 menu and going to Document Preferences. Within Document Preferences, down in Area Label Defaults, we have a few different options. We'll see that here, the first option selected is Apply Effort Driven Scheduling when making assignments to BARS. If we like to shift this over so that Fixed Duration method is going to be our default, we can simply deselect this Apply Effort Driven option, and then select our first option, Fixed Duration Scheduling when creating new BARS. Now, in addition to selecting the Fixed Duration option, there is a middle option here labeled Ignore Resource Calendars. This option typically goes hand in hand with our fixed duration scheduling. The reason for this is, again, if we look at that trade show, if the trade show takes three days, say a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we might assign a resource that has a vacation or a non-work day planned over one of those days. Well, because that activity is fixed duration, it still needs to take place over those three specific days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So when we allow this option of ignore resource calendars, it ensures that the task will take place exactly when it's planned and not account for any of those resource exceptions within our project. Now, in addition to being able to change the default method within your schedule, we can also change the method on the fly. So if you forgot that the schedule was going to be planned and effort-driven scheduling and you need to switch over to fixed duration, you can do so at any point in time. To do that, we'll work in the same document preferences dialog that we're currently in. However, now we'll select the tab labeled general. In general, here we see change settings on all bars, and we'll just select the second option, change settings on all bars. And here we note that once we make these changes, they can't be undone. And then we'll see changes for fixed duration, effort-driven scheduling, and in order resource calendars. So again, if we've already planned out a project and we've planned it entirely in effort-driven scheduling, but we need to switch to fixed duration, what we need to do is go to fixed duration, select change all bars to fixed duration, 
effort-driven scheduling, change all bars to not effort-driven scheduling, and it ignore resource calendars, select change all bars to ignore resource calendars. Once we make these changes and we select OK, all activities in our project will now use fixed duration scheduling. Again, at any point in time, we can simply switch back and forth between these methods based on how our project needs to function.